but actually we're doing it in the afternoon but it's okay it'll be shown monday morning uh sabbath morning anyway it is monday is what it is but anyway uh we're going to have prayer and then we're going to get into our program father in heaven we thank you for another day whatever day of the week it is we know you're with us we thank you for sunshine and the rain as well we need it all bless us now as we talk a little bit today about you and about missions in jesus name amen all right let's look at our first of all we're going to see our school and you see what's missing don't you there's just one part i'm going to say we'll call it the hat because it kind of looks like a hat doesn't it but you know it's the roof don't you so we've got it here and you see what's on it there's a clock do you know what time that is it says nine o'clock time for school to start so we're going to get our glue here but I'm going to pick a name. Let's see, if you were here, you would be putting it on. And that is Abdiel. Abdiel, you would have put it on. I hope you don't mind I'm putting it on for you if you're watching. I think you could have reached it. So let me get my little stick glue here. And we'll have our, our uh, school done. I don't know when the children will go into it, but it's ready when they are. I can get this off. There we go. Okay, we'll put some glue on our roof. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to talk about roofs today and a Bible story about roofs. This actually is more than one story in the Bible about roofs. R-O-O-F-S, roofs. But uh, I've, I've selected one I thought would be of interest and it involves Jesus. There we go. There's our school all built up. Isn't that nice? We're glad for it, aren't we, huh? And we hope some children will come and study in it one day. Now let's see, we've talked about the foundation. We've talked about the door. We talked about the walls. We talked about the windows. So we've got to talk about the roof. Did you know that there are many kinds of roofs? I went on the internet and there's this many kinds of roofs and probably more and they all have a name. Isn't that something? Now, I don't see this particular style on here, but it is flat, so maybe it's a flat staircase roof. I, I'm not sure what mine is. I think mine might be, because um, I've got part, part uh, overlaid hip, maybe, or ga gable, because I, and I have part that's flat in the back. So I'll have to study my house a little more, since I know they have so many different names. You might want to have... Your folks check and see what kind of house you have, uh, what kind of roof. But today we're going to talk about a flat roof. And you know where it's from, don't you? It's Bible times. And I got a picture of a flat roof. It's a small house there. The house we're going to talk about was bigger than this. But you see how, uh, how the stairs go up the side? and then you step onto the roof. Now you notice there's sidings around the roof, a little wall, you know why that is, don't you? So people will know when they get into the edge and not fall off. Do you know that Moses, is in the Bible, Moses was talking to the people of Israel, it was almost time for them to go into Canaan, and he told them, now when you go into Canaan, you're gonna live in houses. See, they've lived in tents for 40 years, that's all they knew, but now they were going to go into Canaan, pretty soon and he said when you build your houses be sure you build a little wall around it so that people won't fall off well you think they would know it but he just wanted to be sure just like your mom and daddy say now you be careful you know but they still tell you be careful and Moses told him to be careful well we're going to talk about our our roof now and I'm going to call the man's name Jacob Jacob was a very sad man. Now, it wasn't the Jacob we usually study about. I'm just calling him Jacob because it's a Bible story and that's a Bible name. But Jacob lived at the time when Jesus lived. And Jacob was a very sick man. He was what the Bible called a paralytic. That meant he couldn't walk. Now, when you can't walk, there's a lot of things you can't do. And you don't, unless... I don't... They didn't have wheelchairs in those days. And maybe the way they could get around was if someone... Put them on a cart or carry them you know i read a mission story one time about uh the people didn't have any kind of vehicles or cars 
and they carried someone to the clinic down in the valley in a wheelbarrow. How would you like to be going in a wheelbarrow if you were sick? And sometimes maybe they brought them on carts, and sometimes I read another story how they had to carry someone down steep hills, and oh, it was so hard, they would slide. And so when we get sick, we are, parents take us to the doctor or if it were really bad you go in an ambulance but not in those days so Jacob was very sick but he had two kinds of sickness he was sick in his body because of this paralysis he had but he was sick in his heart and mind because he had done some bad things and he knew they were bad as a matter of fact maybe that was part of the reason he was so sick and he just had what we call a guilty conscience but he didn't know what to do about it because the, uh, the uh, pastors and the priests at the temple would say, well, you brought it on yourself. You're, just forget it. You're, you're not going to heaven for sure. And that just made him feel worse. Well, one day, some of Jacob's friends said, hey, Jacob, guess who's in town? Jesus is in town, the healer. And Jacob said, oh, could you take me to him? Could you take me to him? And they said, sure. So what they did, now remember there were four, so each of them could take the corner of the blanket. I think they even called it a bed because that's what he slept on. And if it were long enough, they could take a pole and kind of roll the, the material around a little bit, and then they would have poles and that would make it easier. So I don't know, the Bible doesn't tell us all the details. But anyway, they carried him and they got almost to this house. It was in Capernaum and oh boy, there were people standing outside. The house was so full. Some people were sticking their head in the window to see what was going on. There was no way they could get in. And if they said, excuse me, excuse me, please, they would just say, we don't have room for you, especially with the bed too, the, the, uh, the cot or, well, the, uh, what can we call it? We call it a cot. Anyway, it was, uh, it was on a rug or a blanket. So they, they were thinking, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And suddenly Jacob looked up at the roof and he said, what about the roof? Well, now we're using our imagination because the Bible doesn't give us all the details, but there are people and we might have done the same thing. And they thought about it and they said, well, we're going to need some ropes. So someone may have had to run home and get the ropes. And then they had to take him up the stairs. Well, a couple of the men said, we'll go up on the, on the roof and see what it looks like. So they went up on the roof. Now, some roofs had, uh, I read, had, uh, they would put the, the boards and then they would put layers of dirt. They would, it would dry out, you know, they'd put like mud and then it would dry out and be kind of firm. And maybe they would try to paint it over with whatever they painted with. But those would leak after a while. But anyway, this one had tiles. Maybe they were long, slim, uh, I don't know, it was a thin rock or made from pottery, something like that, like clay. And so they looked at it and they thought, yeah, we probably could slide a couple of those out. Maybe there's enough length, uh, space between the boards. So they went downstairs again and they said, okay, we'll try it. So I'm trying to figure out how they, did they carry him up the stairs two at a st uh, two on each step? Looks kind of <laughs> looks kind of scary to me. Maybe they did. They didn't want him to slide off the blanket as they're bringing him up, or since they were going to lower him down, maybe they took him up. They got up on the roof and they had the, someone brought up. Uh, they got the ropes uh, up there, threw them up, and. Uh, Maybe they raised him up like on an elevator. So anyway, they got on the roof. And now, remember, Jesus is downstairs teaching the people and uh, probably answering questions. Maybe it was a, a go up back and forth kind of thing. And then, uh, pretty soon, they begin to hear noise up above them. And maybe they felt uh, some, you know, a little trash coming down, maybe leaves or a little dust. And finally, I have a feeling everybody started looking up and they see the roof coming apart. I wonder if the owner was there and he said, hey, who's doing something to my roof? But anyway, it played out. The roof opened up, could see some blue sky, and then they see this uh, stretcher, this blanket coming down right in front of Jesus. 
Now, I imagine everybody was just looking. And you know what I think? I think Jesus smiled. He knew what was going on because God, God was with him. And here's a, one, uh, one picture of it that's in your Bible story. You see how poor man, he looks pretty pitiful. See the hands lowering him down, tied onto the ends of the blanket, corners of the blankets, and there's a lot of people. And the artist tries to make some of them look kind of cross, because what is he doing interrupting this meeting? Maybe some of them knew him, uh, some of the priests in the temple. Well, it said, the Bible says that they, some of them were sitting. Now, I was looking at Bible uh, pictures of houses, and some of them had benches along the wall, kind of attached to the wall on three sides. So maybe they had benches for the important people. So anyway, the man comes down and Jesus looks at him. Now by now, let's think about the men upstairs. They probably all have their heads sticking over the edge now. They want to see what's going on if they've gone to that much trouble. So uh, Jesus looks at the man and you know what he says? He says, son, he called him son, though there probably wasn't an awful lot of difference in their age, but he was so kind and fatherly. He said, son, your sins are forgiven. And the man just, his, his troubled look passed his face and he just relaxed. That's what he wanted to know, first of all. He was right with God. And even if he didn't get healed, he would feel happy inside. You've known people, they don't get better, but they're happy because Jesus is in their heart. So... Before anything else happened, some of these rulers of the temple, they folded their hands like they didn't like this and they looked at each other. Maybe they mumbled under their breath, who does he think he is forgiving sins? Only God can forgive sins. And uh, Jesus looks around. He knows what they're thinking, even if they didn't speak it that loud. He says, why do you reason in your hearts whether I can forgive sin or not? He said, to show that I can forgive sin, and then he turns to the man and he says, rise, take up your bed and walk. And I probably, he probably took the man by the hand and kind of helped him up. Now I want you to know that if you've been in bed for a while and you're supposed to walk, you're walking like this. Your legs are not strong. You probably need some help. Maybe you need a walker and you need physical therapy, but not this man. When God healed him, he healed him completely. Now, let's look back at our men on the roof. They're looking down, and when they see this man rise up, I almost think they all shouted, Woohoo! Praise the Lord! They were as excited as the man. And you know what Jesus had said? I mean, what the Bible says, it says, Jesus seeing their faith. He didn't just say, see the man's faith, see their faith. It was the faith of them all together, working together, that made the difference. And so the man, he got up, rolled his bed up, and Jesus said, you can go to your house. Now, when he got out the door by then, I have a feeling that his four friends had raced down those stairs and were ready to greet him when he came out the door. And they were patting him on the back, and maybe they gave some high fives, and they just said, hallelujah. And everybody went home with a smile. And you know what the Bible says the people said? Let me read you what it says. The people who saw all this happen, the Bible says over here in Luke, and let me find where it is. Here it says, they were all amazed. They glorified God and said, we have seen strange things today. And it may have been all the whole thing. They probably went home and said, you know what happened today? Someone came through the roof, but the roof didn't get broken. It was broken up, but it didn't break because they were standing on it. And I have a feeling maybe those four friends went back and fixed the roof, don't you? I don't think they left it that way. Well, that's our story about the roof and the man uh, that was healed. Now we're going to put our offering in.